Y'all fake bitches over here getting all this damn surgery and then y'all telling people they could all oh, go work out and be the and taking pictures in the gym because all oh, this how much I work out. Y'all lying ass. You haven't even been to the gym. How do you feel the social media has affected the way that people perceive health these days? You think it has been harmful or it actually be, it has been helpful? Yeah. I mean, it has been harmful since the beginning because I remember growing up aspiring to be one of these Victoria's Secret supermodels or, mm -hmm. you know, the fashion models. Now we have the Instagram models right. and the Instagram and social media beauty standards. So the toxic part has always been there for everyone. Um, but also you find so much people that are trying to give, give out the knowledge of how to eat healthier, how to have a healthier lifestyle, how to become more like a balanced person, mm -hmm. to have like connection with yourself, your spiritual, you know, your spiritual mm -hmm. side. So it's, it's also a tool uh, for everyone to find whatever they want. I right. mean, if social media will only reflect whatever you have in your mind. So if you have, I don't know, like the way you want to look or if you're obsessed right. with like fashion or yeah. like bodies, Instagram will just reflect that. I mean, but if yeah. you want to be better for yourself, it will give you that too. I feel, I feel the same way, even with filters, you know, the filters that they have added, yes. I feel the same way when it comes to <laughs> a lot of people on social media are consistently talking about health and a lot of these models, with all due respect to them, but are you over here promoting how healthy you are in all these apps, but are you mm. went and you bought them and you got them snatched, so you're promoting. Correct this unrealistic fake standard of health and working out and True. all these other things but you've already gotten a thousand surgeries to accomplish a certain look that Correct. other people really have to work out for so I think that that's one of those things I think the social media it's a facade it's, it's not a facade. real and people don't it understand also has that. allowed people to use it as a selling marketing tool correct which now they're selling a whole bunch of products and stuff to lose weight and this tea and it doesn't and this, work and it doesn't yeah. work no, no, no. so i feel like it's been good yeah. it can complement a certain lifestyle but it's not gonna change, change your life as a miracle from one day to another, right. that's not gonna happen. Basically what I really wanted to say is, y'all fake bitches over here getting all this damn surgery and then y'all telling people they can all oh, go work out and be the and taking pictures in the gym because all oh, this, how much I work out, y'all lying ass. You haven't even been to the gym, okay? You just took off that waist trainer. Oh, and that's another thing. The talking about health, everybody wants to talk about these damn waist trainers and they're always trying to promote, oh, buy a waist trainer and get snatched. First of all, you're only snatched because you got surgery. And for the other ones that are putting the waist trainers, but I see that over here suffering and you know you're no. not gonna go nowhere. So here's one of those other things too. I mean, I know it's a cultural thing because in the Latino community, some countries more than others, um, we promote a lot like the Fajas in Venezuela, in Colombia, and the Dominican Republic mm -hmm. is one of those places too where we also promote the Faja lifestyle. Yeah, I've used Fajas. Me too. For many years when I was uh, getting ready for, uh, to go to Miss Universe, I remember being in a super calorie deficit that wasn't eating like almost anything, um, working out twice a day, and I was wearing the faja. But I was doing massages to reduce the the, the, inches. the, the inches in the waist, and that's the only way it helps. But if you think you're just gonna put on a faja and just have the same life, it's not gonna do a miracle. It's but not. yeah, the, the, the faja culture in my country, it's like, I think Colombia is the number one yeah. provider yeah. for like the whole world. I think we have to be realistic. We're always yeah. looking for an easy way out into a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If you don't eat properly and educate yourself on nutrition, because that's where I am. I'm trying to figure this out myself. I still haven't figured it out 100%. And if you don't work out, none of these easy remedies is really going to no, be the answer. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, nothing is going to work. And, and I remember being younger and my mom always telling me like, you know, no te pongas gorda or don't be fat, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, and... The, the toxicity comes from the family. It does. From our household. It does. It always comes from a family member. Yeah, and it was my mom. My mom was the chunky one, so she was always like, don't be fat, da 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 and she... was she, projecting her, her insecurities, insecurities onto you because she, she wanted something better for you. Right. You know? So she would buy me the fajas, I would wear them, she would make me go to sleep with them and do all those That's things. That's so unhealthy. Um, yeah. And I know that she meant it from a positive place, but mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry, she just wanted me to be good, and obviously the competition to make it is mm -hmm. very heavy. Everybody's trying to be the best that they can 
can be. Right. And that was part of it. Then it went into, I naturally had like a B cup. Mm -hmm. So I had very small boobs, but a small waist, big butt, big thighs, a very Caribbean Latina yes, body. body. Mm -hmm. And then I felt the pressure of like, <gasps> Oh my God, I don't have any boobs. I have to get boobs. I went and I bought them and I don't even want them. It was just a trend. It was a mm, moment. Okay. So I just feel it was a lot of pressure to just look to a certain look, type of way. Like correct. the, you know, the perfect measurements. Hourglass, yes, yeah. hourglass shape. I mean, you did it because you had you felt pressure to do right, it. Right, right. But some people that I know, that they know that they will look better a certain way. And they don't do it for anyone else, they just do it for but themselves. But how do you know that you would look better? It's society standards that tell you what you would look true, better. True, true, true. It's just the way you feel, you Yeah, know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. In our countries, I don't think people, I may be wrong, and I don't like to generalize, but I don't feel like they really care as much for the health aspect no. of it as much as they care for the if physical you look good, appearance. It doesn't matter if you eat ice all day. Right. <laughs> as long as you you look good, yeah. that's what matters for, for us. But growing up in Colombia, for me, it was a deep, different like a uh, beauty type of, like a beauty standard. For me growing up, it was more like a, like a tall, elegant, sophisticated look. Now the times have changed so much that it's like a different, it's more like an hourglass, curvy. curvy booty and, and, and breast, you know, it's it's different than, than the way I it remembered was. wanting to look like that. I wanted to be long. Like long, skinny. And skinny yeah. and elegant and da, 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 da. Well, that's what I thought elegance was. Um, and I wanted to look like that. That was just naturally not my body type. I'm never just gonna grow five, six more inches. Like, you just have to accept who you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But in my country, what is trendy um, is that Getting the big boobs, the small, small waist, waist, and the big, huge It's like here ass. in America. I yeah. think that's what the beauty standard it's is It's like the right bigger now. your butt is, the more attractive you become for men. For men. And it's yeah. mainly for men. And then it's we, always to please men. And that's the problem. We compete we never, against women. We correct. compete against each other, but it's always correct. about like, look who I got. Or look exactly. who likes me. Da, 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 da. I get the look. Yeah, exactly. And it's I feel, the, I feel the pressure now because I come from being that girl with the big butt that everybody knew me for having a fat butt and for you know having and i a, remember you i'm sure you remember growing up you were like the fat one and now everyone wants to have your body exactly do, like by going under the shirt like yeah, you know yeah. it's it's the nonsense makes i makes remember no being sense. that girl and then recently i lost about 60 pounds and now wow. i received so much hate i received loved but i also received so much hate on social mm. media where I saw people like, oh, we don't like you anymore. We want the thick Amara. Well, your ass is gone. And that also is crazy how my health, my physical appearance also now for two seconds affected my confidence. Of course. Because of, course. of the comments and the reaction. Even though you look better, better for yourself and healthier. Now, it's like people want to see you well, but they don't want to see you better, better than, than them. them. Oh my right? God. It's yes. crazy how people can be very selfish. We as humans can be very selfish. I agree. I agree yeah. 100%. Mm.